Okay, so today's class guide and review is going to be over the Dragon Lord class. This one's going to be handled a little bit differently, as this one is going to start off what I'm hoping to become sort of a mini series within the guides themselves of flashback guides. I want to start doing from time to time guides over some of the older classes in the game. Some of these classes that may have been very good in the past, but have lost their luster due to time and power creep in the game. Or go over some of these older classes that maybe never really got a chance to shine because they were released alongside things like Dragonlord or Troll Spellsmith that simply just overshadowed them and they never really got their chance to show what they could do. So, I'm going to start doing this from time to time. I want to try and get this out, probably alternating with the actual class guides on sort of the more current top tier classes. And we'll see how it goes. If you guys want to leave your suggestion on to what classes I should do for some of this flashback guides, um, there will be a straw poll down below where you guys can go vote on some of the classes that I think would fit well for the series. And if you guys want to suggest some classes, to work in this series. Leave those in the comments down below and I might add a few of those to the straw poll in the future. The requirements to be in this series is it needs to be a class made prior to 2013 as I don't want a lot of newer classes to really kind of overshadow and take over this list and I don't want to just have it turn into class guides 2.0. I want the flashback guides to be separate from the normal class guides. So with that being said, let's get into this. So, the class is Dragonlord this time around, and Dragonlord is the class that you receive for upgrading in Dragon Fable, for buying the Dragon Amulet in Dragon Fable and linking your accounts together. You can then come here in the Guardian Tower to the Dragonlord shop, and can access the Dragonlord class for free. Now, I've ranked it up, I have my Dragonlord class, and now I'm going to go to Undead Pirates to show off the class and get into the skills a little bit more in depth. Okay, so now that we're here at Undead Pirates, I can talk a little bit about the enhancements before we get into the skills. The enhancements for this class, like many of these older classes, is full luck, as unfortunately many of these older classes rely on the crit multiplier that full luck gives you to increase their damage enough to hold their own in this day and age. And unfortunately, power creep has gotten to the point where many of these classes' damage numbers cannot hold up, and they really rely heavily on those crits to support them. So, with that said, this class does rely on luck, and in soloing scenarios, full luck pulls ahead of any other option pretty handily, beating out its closest competition by almost 10 seconds. When it comes to farming, however, farming, the difference between them gets a little bit closer, as in farming, things have time to average out. The power level of crits has a little bit of time to average out. The individual power level of the enhancements and just the average of numbers over time means that your enhancement choice doesn't matter quite as much in farming. However, you will see a noticeable increase in the amount of mana you have and in the consistency in which you are one-shotting mobs as you move through in farming scenario class. So I would definitely recommend to run full luck on this class, although if you would like to splash a thief in there for extra survivability from dodges and the extra haste, that is not a bad option as well. So now let's get into the class's stats and skills. This class does have a 100% base hit chance, which is awesome. Unfortunately, hit chance being over 100% means doesn't mean you are guaranteed to hit as you can still miss. Hit and dodge are not the same skill. They are two different stats, they're two different things, and are not directly influenced by each other. So even though I'm at 100% hit chance, and once I get the hit chance buff off of Heated Blade, I'm getting well over 100% hit chance, you can still miss abilities from time to time, although it is extremely rare. But be aware that you can still miss abilities from time to time. This class does have a standard 2.0 second attack speed and a 110% weapon damage on your auto attack, which does mean that your auto attacks are going to be hitting relatively hard, and the number will be increased a little bit if you are going to choose to splash one thief in your enhancement build. So, for the abilities themselves, we're going to start at the top at Cleave. Cleave costs 20 mana on a 4 second cooldown. Cleave deals moderate damage to up to two targets in melee range. This damage is relatively low by base, but can ramp up pretty high once you've crit, 
and in combination with the damage boost from Cursed Blade, this ability can hit for relatively high, hitting for about a thousand on a crit. Now onto your second ability, Heated Blade. Heated Blade costs 15 mana on a 4 second cooldown. Heated Blade deals small amount of damage to the target and applies Searing Heat. Each stack of Searing Heat increases your haste and hit chance by 5%, stacking up to 4 times. This buff lasts 10 seconds. This ability, while it does pretty low damage, very low damage in fact, can once again on a crit ramp up to doing okay damage, and it is at the end of the day a stacking ability. It's primarily there for stacking, to increase your haste and that hit chance, to help you reduce your cooldowns, to help you get in that extra damage. So this primarily is here for its stacking, and you really don't care about its damage output. Your third ability is Life Stealer. Life Stealer has a Life Stealer costs 35 mana on a four second cooldown. Life Stealer deals more damage the lower HP you are. So it does da damage equal to the difference between your current HP and your maximum HP, and then it heals you for a portion of the damage dealt. Measuring exactly how much health this gives you is relatively difficult as comparing one number to another and whether you crit or not and how, how much damage the target is taking, do they have any damage reduction, that kind of thing, if you're using a stable or unstable weapon or not, makes it relatively difficult to figure out exactly how much this heals for, but it's definitely relatively low. Even when you're below about half health, this ability is normally only going to heal you for 200, maybe 300 the most. Unfortunately, this ability simply doesn't heal for very much, and while the heal does increase if you get a crit on this, it is still not very substantial, and this heal's weakness is one of the weaker parts of this class, and is what really holds it back from being powerful. Now for your fifth ability, Cursed Blade. Cursed Blade costs 20 mana on an 8 second cooldown. Cursed Blade damage ramps up the lower mana you get, meaning that there is an inverse relationship to the amount of damage this ability does and how much mana you have. The lower on mana you are, the higher damage this ability does, capping out somewhere around 2.5k. This ability will also apply Cursed Blood, increasing the damage that the target takes by 12% per 12 seconds. This ability and the effect are loopable, so you can keep up that increased damage on a target permanently, as long as the target doesn't die, of course. So, Curse Blade is pretty good. Being able to hit two targets and apply two targets with that debuff allows all of your future abilities to hit them much, much harder, allowing you to get more healing out of Life Drinker, allowing you to get more damage out of your cleave. That is just a damage increase, and that's never a bad thing. This class does have two passives, and unfortunately has no rank 10 passives as they were in the game when this class was made. Your first rank 4 passive is Furious, increasing your damage output by 15%, and your second passive is Resolute, reducing your damage taken by 10%. These are both pretty good passives. Straight up damage increases and damage reductions are never a bad thing to see. So these are both fairly good passives, and while I would like to see it have a rank 10 passive, unfortunately that's not the case as the class was made back in 2009 when rank 10 passives were not a thing. The Dragon Lord is a pretty good class and was, for a time, the best class in the game. When it came out in 2009, with the release of the upgrade shops from the original AE games, this class was ridiculously powerful for the time. Having buffs, having debuffs, having healing, having multi-target damage really set this class apart from anything else that existed in the game at the time. So, Dragonlord is kind of historically relevant to the game and is important to many of us who played back then who used this class and had this class available to us because it was so powerful and it was just such a fun thing to use that we really didn't get multi-target damage in the game, that multi-target damage was really not something we saw very commonly back then. And so having a sort of farming class was just a little bit of an oddity at the time and was what made this class so powerful at the end of the day. I still enjoy this class today, and it still is a relatively competent farmer, even farming faster than Arch Paladin. Well, Arch Paladin itself is not a dedicated farming class. Arch Paladin does have multi-target damage skills and can be used to farm if you need to, and this class can come in even faster than that because of its consistency of its damage. So, now we're going to head over to King Cole to show off a little bit of the class's soloing and talk a little bit about how to use the class in an actual fight before we jump into 
what I want to start doing with some of these older classes when I feel will set the flashback reviews apart from the regular ones. I want to show off how I would improve the class to bring it up to today's standards to help bring it in line with the classes we have today. Okay, so now we're here at King Cold to show off a little bit of how to actually use this class in a fight. So, when you start off, I'm normally going to lead with 5 simply to apply the increased damage to the target. And then I'm going to try and stack up relatively quickly my 3, as it is a haste buff, allowing you to get off your abilities more quickly and in turn deal more damage or heal more damage over the course of a fight. This class does benefit from being at relatively low mana, so don't be afraid to spam your abilities a little bit in the beginning of the fight to try and hover yourself around halfway, just because it will increase the damage output of Cursed Blade by a pretty significant amount, allowing you to finish the fight much faster. As you can see, the class really doesn't have too many mana issues, as it does crit very often, and the crits regenerate you quite a bit of mana, that you really have to try pretty hard to ram yourself out of mana on this class, and it's not such a huge deal. that You really don't need to worry too much about mana issues with this class, and that's a good thing. You want to try and make sure that you don't let your buffs from either your 3 or 5 fall off, try and refresh those relatively close to on cooldown, and if you're going to be using your life stealer, make sure that you have the damage buff from Cursed Blade up before you use it, because the healing that you receive from Life Stealer is proportional to the damage dealt. So, the damage increase you're getting off of Cursed Blade will increase the amount of healing you receive, and that is important for survivability, as unfortunately, this class's heal is not a guaranteed hit, which is a shame. That Life Stealer is not a guaranteed hit, it can miss and it is a relatively low heal at that, and so you want to be getting all that you can out of the life stealers that you do get off. So, with that said, as we get closer to the end of the fight, you can see that this fight really wasn't too much of a big deal. That King Cold, he hits me relatively hard from time to time, getting a crit, but the heals are keeping me alive pretty easily, my damage output is pretty consistent, and the fight's really not too big of an issue at the end of the day. That. I'm relatively happy with how this fight's going. Probably going to speed up the last minute or so of this fight just to keep you guys from getting bored, and I'll see you guys on the other end. Okay, so there it is. King Cold down. So, it was pretty easy. Not too much fuss about it. He fell fairly, fairly easily. And while that's not the hardest bite faucet... And while King Hold is not the hardest boss in the game by any means, it is a boss that gives us a relative benchmark of how well this class can do in soloing. And the class can hold its own in farming, that this is primarily a farming class. While well, when it first came out back in the day, it was a little bit more of a soloing class simply because there weren't that many great soloing classes at the time, that Berserker was really the best soloing class at the time, unfortunately. And later on when Necromancer came out, it toppled it as a soloer. But, this class is really more of a farming class, and it does perform very well doing that. It's nowhere near a top level farmer in the game currently, it's nothing on the level of like Blazebinder, but it is a pretty competent farmer, and can hold its own in that category. It is also relatively okay in non-OP PvP, which is a small community that exists on some servers that people use as sort of an alternative to PvP because they hate seeing just Vindicator days and Lightcasters and Void High Lords all over the place. So it has grown a bit of a following in the non-OP PvP community. Okay, so here we are at my house to talk about the changes that I propose to Dragonlord to help keep it in line with classes today. And these changes are designed to take the class more in a farming direction to help make it more of a farming class that this is not the kind of class that really needs to do a whole lot of damage in soloing scenarios. It doesn't really need to um, get crazy damage. It doesn't really need to have these big nukes. But that's not really what this class needs. It doesn't need a whole lot of stuns. It's not super a PvP class that I more want to design this for farming. So that's what I did with this. And I made changes to the abilities to reflect that. First up on Cleave, your first ability. I changed, I proposed to change the range, to increase the range, as right now the range is a little bit longer than melee range. 
It, the ability itself says that it's in melee range, but it's not quite melee range. It's actually longer than melee range, but not by a lot. So it increased the, the range on the ability, allowing you to hit anybody anywhere on the map on your screen. And I would increase the base damage of this ability so that once it's critting, you're seeing somewhere in the neighborhood of like 1,500 to 2,000, depending on if you're using a stable weapon or unstable weapon, and kind of the damage numbers that um, feel really fit allow it to actually be able to kill those mobs that you need to farm. I'd also change it so that it affects three targets instead of two, just so that you can better clear out rooms as many farming classes and many maps are designed with three mobs in one room, and being able to hit three targets would just help to significantly speed up your kill time and clear time. Your three heated blade, I would increase the maximum stacks from four to five, and I would add a stacking crit chance buff to the ability. I would make it so you would also gain a 5% crit chance to the ability per stack. This would just help you to increase the damage output this cast is capable of, allowing you to get more consistent crits and output more crits more often, increasing your mana regen and increasing your damage overall. Your fourth ability, I'd probably make it so that it can't miss. Your fourth ability, I'd probably change so that it cannot miss. And I would probably leave it unchanged outside of that, except I would increase the percentage of health returned by this ability significantly, or simply make it a flat out leech so that you're healing one for one for the damage to health you gain back. And I feel like this is okay, that a lot of times straight up leeches are not considered to be very healthy. However, this ability does pretty low damage if you're full health, and does much more damage when you're lower health. And so, in a similar way to Scarlet Sorceress, how you are healing much more when you are lower and healing less when you're higher health, this ability does the same thing. You're healing more when you're lower, healing less when you're higher health because you don't need it as much, and you're doing a lot more damage because of that. So I feel like that's a relatively good way to balance out if you're soloing or if you do decide to take this into PvP. Your fifth ability, I would change to increase its range again, as this ability is ranged, but it again is a pretty short range, and so I would increase that range to be in line with your standard farming class abilities so you can reach pretty much across the map most of the time outside of those really big maps. I would increase the damage scaling that you get, the damage multiplier that you get for being at lower mana. So I'd probably lower the base damage a tiny bit, but increase the maximum damage possible when the mana, with the mana-based damage scaling on this ability. So it has a higher maximum, but a lower minimum, making it so that a good player who's watching their mana and taking care of their mana and kind of working to keep themselves at a relatively low mana cost, sort of about half, can use this class to get a lot more damage out than somebody who's just spamming kind of mindlessly. So I want to reward a good player for that. I also want to change the ability so it hits three targets instead of two to keep it in line with most farming abilities. And I want to increase the damage boost that you gain from this ability's buff from 12% to 15%, once again to just help it increase that damage output a little bit more. As for the passives, I want to change Furious from being a damage increase passive to being a haste increase passive, increasing your haste by 10%, helping you to be at haste cap a little bit faster, because this class right now cannot actually get to haste cap, it sits at 40%, but in this one, at full stacks, you'd be at 45%, and then you add in the passive and you're at 55%, getting over that haste cap, allowing you to get off your abilities a little bit faster. I would change Resolute's damage reduction, increasing it from 10% to 15%, just for that little bit of extra survivability as this class's heal is on a relatively high cooldown and a relatively high mana cost compared to many heals in the game, especially for a farming class. And for the rank 10 passive, a flat 20% damage increase, which is effectively a 5% damage increase over the previous passives that it had before these changes that I'm proposing which is not a big deal, but, as always, more damage output is never a bad thing in any situation. And those are the changes that I propose. I think that the class could be made very easily much better, that the changes that I have here are not massive, that these are just minor tweaks to the numbers, that you just change a few numbers around and suddenly this class gets a lot better. And I think that it really wouldn't be too much of a big deal to make this class good again and really bring it up to the level of classes that we have nowadays. 
and that's and the series is mostly about showing off and showcasing some of these older classes and sort of shining a little bit of light on these older classes and i don't know if we cross our fingers and pray maybe we can get one of these classes reworked and try and get some of these older classes a little bit of new life but these are my proposals this is what i think if you guys have any suggestions on how you think you would rework the class what abilities you would change Maybe I'm wrong in this, maybe I'm wrong in trying to take it into a farming direction, maybe this should be a soloing class or a PvP class. Leave those in the comments down below, I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on this as reworking kind of class design and stuff like that is something that I'm interested in, so it's, it's fun. If you guys want to chat a little bit more with me and with some other people in the community about it, feel free to hop on a Discord link that is also in the description below. Um, there's people on there pretty often talking about class design and different stuff like this, and so it's, it's a pretty good community over there. But with that being said, Dragonlord is a pretty good class, and unfortunately it's been outclassed by time and power creep, and while I think that it is never going to quite return to the glory days that it had when it first came out, it is still a very good class, and unfortunately is just, like I said, outdated. And I think that it should receive a little bit more love from the community than it has recently. That many of the veteran players, like me, um, still appreciate the class for what it was, but many newer players just look at it and all of the other upgrade classes as sort of trash. And that, that leaves a bad taste in my mouth, and I just wanted to show off a little something different. So, that being said, I want to thank you all for coming. I hope you all had a great day. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy this content and want to see more from me, please feel free to subscribe. If you guys want to leave a like, comment, anything like that, please do that all below. And as always, this content is brought to you by your kind support over at Patreon. Thank you.